Today I'm going to be reviewing the Angwe Engine Pro. Here's my unbiased opinion. I think the Engine Pro is probably their best bike in terms of rideability, in terms of weight, in terms of its components. This is probably the best bike. It's not the most fun bike, but it's probably the best bike that they have at the current moment. In terms of fun, I think the M20 was a lot of fun because it has that retro look, that position, and it's a lot of fun to ride. So that's probably the most fun bike that they offer. But uh, in my honest opinion, this bike has everything that someone is going to need if they're looking for a really, really solid bike. Now, I'm not going to go through all the features because a lot of these features in today's e-bike world are pretty much standard. You get dual suspension, obviously. Uh, you get dual brakes, obviously, and you get a color LCD screen. Some have it, some don't. This one does. It's very easy and legible to read, and we'll talk a little bit more about that once we actually hit the road. But for the beginning of this video, I want to focus on the really, really strong selling points of this Engine Pro e-bike. For one, it has a 16 amp hour battery that lives inside of here. This bike is able to be folded. The cool part is that Angway says that a lot of their e-bikes will do over 25 to 27 miles an hour. And they say that this one does 30 miles an hour. And guess what? It actually does 30 miles an hour and I have tested this bike and as a matter of fact I've brought it all the way up to 31 or 32 miles per hour on a straight road and we'll see if we can replicate that once again in this video. Besides that it'll do about 70 miles on pedal assist and about 30 miles on full electric mode when you're using the thumb throttle which we'll also talk about in a little bit. And of course it also has three different functions. It has eco mode, regular mode, and sport mode. And I particularly like riding in sport mode all the time. There's no reason to go into the, into the other ones. Besides that, these shocks, the one in the front and the one in the rear, actually work as opposed to their other e-bikes. As I mentioned before, I've ridden three of their other e-bikes. Until you ride the Engine Pro, you won't realize that the other ones don't work as well as this. But the suspension works so smooth. It is very, very butter smooth on on unpaved roads and on dirt roads. And, and I'll show you guys a little bit more once we're actually on the road. But this is hydraulic in the front and in the rear. That's just a regular style shock. But this performs absolutely butter smooth. And I think that's one of the hugest selling points of the C-Bike. The other big selling point of the C-Bike is that it only weighs 69 pounds wet. With the battery included, which is absolutely phenomenal because this bike feels very featherweight compared to their other e-bikes, which weigh in excess of 90 pounds and above. And then finally, you get hydraulic brakes in the front as well as in the rear. Now, as I mentioned before, their M20 model is a fun bike to ride, but I can imagine if they put these uh, front brakes as well as these type of shocks on that bike, I think it would perform a lot better, and I would probably say that that bike is a really, really strong contender as well. But for now, I think that's all we're going to talk about in this ride. As, as you can see, everything else is pretty much standard. You get a cargo rack in the back, folding mechanism, 20-inch tires. The seat post can be raised up and down. The handlebar can be raised up and down. We all know these features because we've read it on their website. But right off the bat, I can say that the motor is very torquey. Just like all their other e-bikes, this has a 750 watt motor, which, which peaks out at 1000 watts. And I'm currently riding in sport mode. My battery level is 100%. And I have a total of 14.3 miles on my odometer. And so by the end of this ride, I'll tell you how many miles I've ridden and what my battery percentage looks like in sport mode and on level 5. And of course I'm not going to baby the throttle because right now I'm in the park but once we get out of here it's full throttle baby. As I mentioned before one of the strongest selling points of this bike is that it actually feels like a bicycle. It does not feel like you're riding an undersized motorcycle. Because a lot of these 80, 90, 100 pound e-bikes they're only about a quarter of what a motorcycle is in terms of weight. And they feel very, very heavy when you're tossing it back and forth. But this bike feels so nimble. And I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but we're doing 30.4 miles per hour. Slight hill going down. Now we're going up a hill, doing 28 miles an hour. And that's incredible because there are other e-bikes like, uh, like the X20, I believe that I rode. I think that's what it was. I mentioned before the X20, although around the same price point, it struggled. It would only go up to about 21 miles an hour. And I'm not sure if it's just software or it's programmed to run that way, but 
when they advertise a certain speed and that it doesn't, it's it's very disappointing. Maybe it's just a software upgrade. Maybe it was just my e-bike. I don't know, guys. But I, I love the fact that this goes as advertised, and the motor and the motor feels really, really torquey. Twenty-five miles an hour. This is a pretty level road, and there's no wind coming towards me. We're, we're doing about 27 miles an hour right now. Thumb hard on the throttle, 28 miles an hour. Actually, yeah, it was a slight hill. I think now we're going to go downhill. Yeah, but we're doing 20, 28 miles an hour, which is pretty impressive. And as I mentioned, from zero to whatever, it gets up there really quickly. Which I'll test for you guys in a little bit. The roads are pretty empty. It's... The day after Christmas, that's the 26th of December at the moment. And so the roads are a little empty. People are obviously not going back to work. And so we may be able to play around with the brakes and do some hard braking on these streets. I just don't wanna I just don't want anybody to rear end me. <laughs> that would not be a good test ride. But yeah, look at the suspension. I do have it in the softest setting at the moment, so that does help. But as far as the rear as far as the rear shock. That's static, you really can't change it, but uh, I love the fact that it feels soft. And when you're trying to bounce up and down on it purposely, you could actually tell that it's going up and down and absorbing whatever you're going over. Let's go. All right, let's see if anybody's behind us. I got one guy behind us. Light turned green. Twenty nine miles an hour. Twenty nine point five miles an hour. Twenty nine point eight miles an hour. Thirty point eight miles an hour. Thirty one. I got up to thirty one miles an hour. That was pretty impressive. Yeah. So this bike definitely is not a slouch. So here's a brake test right here for you guys. <laughs> From 28 miles an hour to zero. That was pretty awesome. So yeah, it, it, it definitely slows down. And I used the combination of the front and the rear brakes without hitting the guy in front of me. Obviously I was a little bit towards his right. Yeah, so these are some pretty bumpy roads. And I gotta say, my bottom is not complaining to me right now that it's hurting. I love the plush suspension. I just I just love it. I've ridden a ton of e-bikes by now on this channel and just in general. And they are they they all include like, you know, these complicated suspensions like the X X20 I believe had three different types of suspension. It had uh, the dual coilovers, the dual coil ones, and then it also had the one that this one has. So that's two, that's three in the back, and then two in the front. Yeah, it was like super complicated, but but it really didn't do much as much as this one is. So I like that. It doesn't always have to include so many things. It just needs to be a little bit more soft and actually work as intended. And I like the fact that this does. Oh, and I completely forgot to mention, I'm currently in eighth gear, which is the one that gives you the most torque. I don't know how to describe that. Hopefully I did. But as far as uh, pedal assist is concerned, I don't always use the thumb thr thumb throttle. I can't even say that correctly. I don't always use the thumb throttle. There you go. <laughs> Sometimes I just pedal. And uh, the good news is that it doesn't have dead pedaling. So if once you're once you start pedaling like at least one or two revolutions, uh, the pedal assist starts kicking in right away, and you get going. And I like that a lot because on some bikes. You gotta like pedal at least three or four revolutions in order for the pedal assist to kick in. And then some other e-bikes somewhere in between. But on this one, one or two pedal revolutions and you're off into the races. A little incline right now, we're doing 23 miles an hour. I'm only using pedal assist at the moment. Something about pedaling just makes it a bit more engaging. I don't always use the throttle. It's good exercise too, although I wouldn't use this bike for exercise. And then I'm not sure if you're noticing, but check it out guys. This bike has cruise control. 
Yes, it's got cruise control. It doesn't make a beeping sound once cruise control is enabled as an FYI. However, once cruise control is activated, which like I said, you can't tell when it's activated, you can literally take your hands off the wheel and this thing is gonna continue to ride for you, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, as far as e-bikes are concerned, this is the first e-bike from Angway that I've ridden that has cruise control. The other e-bike, the X20 model that I rode, it has the cruise control functionality on the dashboard. When enabled, it still doesn't work. And when I emailed Angway about that, they said that it doesn't have the cruise control functionality even though it was built into this. So, like I said, a lot of these e-bikes, how good or how bad they are, is all dependent on the programming of the computer or ECU. Some have full speed enabled, others are kind of dumbed down, others have certain functions enabled, and other bikes don't. But I feel like this bike has everything enabled, and that's what I like about it, and I think that's why I think it's the best e-bike that Angway currently offers. So there yonder in front of us is a huge hill. Hopefully I don't get crushed by this guy. This hill is going to go down and then once it goes down we're going to come back up this hill and try this bike out and give it the all famous hill test. What a pretty day to ride a bicycle. I don't know. I just said bicycle right now but I don't even know if these things are bicycles. I, I don't think I don't think what I'm riding right now is a true bicycle. I really think that these are mopeds. They may look like bicycles because it has pedals, but quite honestly, guys, these are mopeds. They're more like dumbed down motorcycles. For one, it's got a motor. <laughs> Two, you don't need to use the pedals in order to go. So therefore, it's a motorcycle, right? Am I right in saying that? Leave a comment down below. What are your thoughts on it? I think these are just motorcycles. Inexpensive motorcycles that anyone can buy and commute back and forth to work. But anyway, 29 miles an hour going down a hill. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna cover both brakes because, yeah. But suspension doing a wonderful job of keeping things plush. Yeah, the brakes are just wonderful, guys. I'm telling you, these things work so well. Hydraulic brakes are where it's at, man. It makes like a ticking sound from the rear. I'm not sure if yours does that, but mine is making like a ticking sound. I'm not sure if that's normal or not, but it does. it's not like I mind it or it's bothersome. Just something that I'm noticing. You know what I mean? That's only when I'm going like really fast. It makes that ticking sound while I'm using the rear brakes. Is it coming from the rear brakes? I'm not sure. Anyway, we've done about three miles, 17 miles on the odometer. And I'm down to 90%, but that's also because the bike has been sitting for a long time before this ride. And prior to that, I think I went on one or I think I went on one or two other rides, which were short rides. But yeah, right now the bike is on cruise control. I don't know if you can see, but here are my hands. 32 miles an hour going down a slight hill. And we're gonna get to a section where it's super bumpy, and I take all these bikes on. Here we go, this is a super bumpy area. This road is just terrible on some bikes and scooters. And I'm gonna keep talking so you can hear my voice. Yeah, so here's a really bumpy section. Here's another seriously bumpy section. Ah, oh, this suspension is doing a wonderful job. Look at that. Yeah. Guys, I gotta say, I'm super impressed with the suspension. I mean, it's still bumpy. It's not like I'm I'm driving a Cadillac, you know what I mean? It's not like uh, a, a, a $100,000 SUV, like a BMW or something, like BMW X7. Obviously, I'm on an e-bike. It's a $1,000 e-bike. But as far as other e-bikes can compare to this, this takes the cake right here in terms of the best Angway has to offer at the current moment, at least from what I've tried. Anyway, we're at the beach. It's pretty here. Check this out. I'd love to take the, the bike on the on the beach, but I don't want to get sand all over it, but that'll be cool. We can do that. Ah, I think I'm going to skip it. So yeah, we're going to ride this all the way towards the end and then go back on the street and head up 
into that same hill the day after Christmas and everybody's out and before I forget happy Christmas to you and your family and a happy new year what a beautiful day on the beach riding this Angway engine pro e-bike and reviewing it for you guys people are looking at me like this guy's got a full-on helmet on is this a motorcycle or is this a bicycle they're confused normally you don't see people wearing full helmets full motorcycle helmets for that matter <laughs> but this is how I can have clean audio for you guys and a camera that takes great video here's a little bump ooh, ooh. Ah. This bike is so graceful, you gotta love it. And you know, I have a basis of comparison now. Like if this was my first e-bike, I wouldn't talk about it as much. I wouldn't really like, I wouldn't say anything beyond the first time I talked about it. But considering I've ridden so many e-bikes, especially three others from Angway, you know, it's like one of the major selling points at this point for me. Because when you're riding on these bumpy roads and then feeling the other bikes and then now you're onto something like different and you're feeling the suspension on a different bike that is way better than the others, it kind of leaves a mark on you and you're like, wow, this is so cool. It's hard to go back to anything else because the level and the bar has been raised. But anyway, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. <laughs> Just know that it's good, okay? Thank you for not killing me. I just want to go on my way. And I think you got to hold the throttle for five to seven seconds, and then it automatically goes to cruise control. But I wish there was like a beeping sound. That's one of the criticisms I have, I guess, is that it doesn't make a beeping sound whenever it goes to cruise control mode. The scooters all have cruise control. E-bikes, not so much, but on, 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 uh, on the scooters, makes a little beeping sound that's convenient and you know that you're there but on this it doesn't do that and I wish it did so I've been using the throttle I would say 90% of this ride and so we're down to 80% battery life and we've ridden four miles all right we are back up these hills this one is a steep one but it's not the steepest hill I'm using pedal assist at the moment 16 miles an hour but once we get up that hill right there I'm not going to use pedal assist and I'm going to see how much this struggles. Alright, so now this is all thumb throttle. 14 miles an hour, sport mode, level 5. 13 miles an hour, 12.9, 12.4, 11.6, 11 11.3, 11.0, 10.7, 10.4. Now, right about this point, is when the other bikes are doing about seven miles an hour. But this one, 9.8. And I think it has something to do with the weight, considering this bike only weighs 69 pounds as opposed to the other ones, which are juggernauts, 90 pounds and above. Nine miles an hour, 8.8 .8 miles an hour. If you're a heavy person, 200 pounds and above, you would probably be about six miles an hour right now, but I'm not that heavy. I'm somewhere around 135, 140, 9 miles an hour. Guys, this is pretty impressive. I'm going to kick into pedal assist at the moment. Because I don't want to bog it down too much. And cause it to have a brain hemorrhage. <laughs> which I doubt it will. But look at that. I held on to this for long enough time. And it kicked into cruise control mode. And now I could just ride without hands. Which probably not a good idea considering I got a car in front of me. But yeah. I, I'm kind of I'm I'm thoroughly impressed with that hill climb. I think it did a pretty good job. Woo! <laughs> oh man! All right. So final conclusions. I love this bike, and it's going to be hard to part with it. And nor I normally sell e-bikes once I review them, because you know you, I I just don't have room for all of them. But it's going to be difficult to part with this one. I might just keep this one for myself. Um, I love the bike. It's great. I do have a couple of niggles with it, and these are very, very tiny ones. Uh, for one, this honk here. <laughs> very quiet. Like, I don't think anybody would hear me. That guy who I passed had his window open, the one that almost tried to kill me. He had his window open, and I honked, and he couldn't hear me. So, uh, Angway sells bikes that have way louder honks in this and I, that's just one thing I don't understand about this company is that their products are just not consistent but this one 
I wish I had a better honk. Uh, besides that, whenever it goes into cruise control mode, I wish it had some kind of an alert feature where it beeps or something. This way I know I'm in cruise control. Uh, but besides that, guys, it's it's an almost perfect bike, to be honest with you. Um, find something you don't like about it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.